All right, so we've got both of our systems in place, ready to be soldered. So what we're gonna do next, this is optional. You know, if you're a DIYer, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but this is our nitrogen uh, tank setup. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do a nitrogen flow as we braze these lines in. And these little, this little tool can be found on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description but basically there's three settings, off, purge, and braze. Braze is the setting we're gonna want to use and this automatically regulates how much pressure. We just want a little bit of flow in the lines and that will keep the inside of our lines from getting that carbon buildup that you don't have, that you, you'll get a little bit of it if you don't have a nitrogen purge. It's not the end of the world. Before they, dis they discover that nitrogen will prevent that, there's many systems where they did not do this. In fact, up until five years ago, I didn't do this. And there's systems that are 30 years old that didn't have a nitrogen flow done. So again, you don't have to necessarily do this, but I like to do it just to keep the insides of my line nice and clean. So we're gonna set this up on our middle line that goes to our manifold. We're gonna close both of these off. Go ahead and turn the pressure on. Set this aside. Now here on our gauges, we're gonna remove the high side. Put it on our high side. Now some people like to remove these valve cores before doing this. I don't think it's really necessary. I make sure and wrap this really well with wet rags before we do the soldering. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap our lines. We're gonna go ahead and do our liquid line first. So actually we're gonna just take this one off, let it sit, and we're gonna wrap this side real tight. Just gonna start here. These are wet rags, by the way. I, uh, you don't want them too, too soaking wet because you'll notice that it will vaporize and it can mess up with your flame. So that's about where we want it. And then we're just gonna kind of cover this one, block it from the heat. Now we've got our torches here. This is an oxyacetylene torch. Um, pretty standard setup. You can buy this whole kit for about $200. So if you're doing this, you know, as kind of a one-time thing, you know, you're saving upwards of three, $4,000. Uh, this is a very versatile tool. You can heat, heat parts up if you're doing stuff in the garage and uh, it's just nice to have. So 200 bucks will get you this set. And then we're using what they call Silfos Stay Sil 5. So these are our brazing rods and they have about 5% silver. So we're gonna get our torch started and we'll give you a close up of how we're uh, brazing this in. But first of all, we're going to go ahead and open our line. This is going to allow Our nitrogen to start flowing so this will be nice and clean once we get done braising it down take our rag off this side it's still nice and cool and now we're gonna grab our mirror and we're gonna check both sides of this to make sure we're good all right so let's check all the way around here 
perfect all the way around. So we can now move on to our suction side. Let's go ahead and wrap that one. Pull that off as quick as you can. Go ahead and pull this off. I've tried those putties and I've found that personally rags just seem to work a lot better for me. So we're going to again check all the way around here. So we should be good to go. All right, so we're gonna move on to the inside portion. We're going to leave this on the braze setting. All right, so for this part of the system, we don't need to wrap anything, being as we removed that insulation. So we're just gonna hit these two spots real quick, and then we will reattach this and do our pressure test. All right, so once again, we're just gonna go through here. Check all of these joints. Got a little opening there. I'm gonna have to hit that one more time. As you can see, this whole side looks really good. And then this guy looks really good as well. So I just gotta hit the bottom of that and then we should be good to go. All right, got that bottom hit and we are good to go. All right, so what we're gonna do next is just take our piece of tape off. That little plastic piece will come off with it, which is okay, we don't need that. And we'll let this uh, thing off up here that we had taped. So our nut will slide all the way down just like that that's how you want it so what we're gonna do is take this make sure there's nothing on it slide it onto this lip right here so you're going to slide that onto this lip and with it on that lip you can tweak this just a little bit to get it to be flush right there and it'll slide in like that once it's flush, you just take your nut, 
thread it on and you're good to go. Then we can tighten that up fully and we will be ready for our pressure test. So you don't have to tighten this too much, but you do want to get it pretty snug. I think 35 foot pounds is the technical torque setting. I usually just give it a good snug like that and uh, we'll do our pressure test to make sure that we're good to go. So we'll go back outside and do that. All right. All right, so back here out at our unit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, take, turn this off, and let the pressure off of here, take our little regulator off. And we're just gonna hook it straight up to our nitrogen. Make sure these are off. Turn our nitrogen back on. And we're going to feed in. All right, so my camera ran out of juice during this part, but basically with our nitrogen pressure test, all we did was we cracked open this side and we ran it up to about just over 150. And this has been sitting for like an hour now and has not moved whatsoever. So our pressure test was good. We're gonna go ahead and turn our nitrogen off. Crack this line, let all that pressure out. Crack both of them. Now the next part that we're gonna be doing is we're going to be pulling a vacuum. And this is very important. Um, if you don't have a vacuum pump, you can get one for a pretty decent amount. This is a five CFM. You can get away with, you know, a three CFM um, if you found a deal on one, uh, but they will have the same size as long as it's a residential vacuum pump as your gauge set. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this, let the pressure off. Got quite a bit of pressure on it. All right, just gonna hook it up to our vacuum pump here. Now this is something you don't necessarily need. If your pressure test was good, um, you can just run your vacuum pump for you know a few hours and I'm sure you will be fine. But this is a way of kind of expediting that process. Um, so this is a micron gauge by CPS and it'll basically tell us how far down we have pulled this system. So we're gonna go ahead and open both valves Make sure these are tight. And then we're going to cut our vacuum pump on. Yeah. On the home stretch here, just getting the vacuum pulled on the line set, get all the so just for reference here this system has been running the vacuum pump's been running for about 45 minutes now and we're already down to 430. 500 microns is like the standard um, for what you want to achieve before you should shut these off and introduce your Freon. So we're at an awesome level just within 45 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and close these off and we're gonna show you how to introduce the Freon. So let's close these, turn our vacuum pump off. And then down here, you'll see these two ports. You'll just unthread these. Take your Allen head and just open these both up all the way.
that's it. The system is ready to go. We're gonna just put these caps back on. I'm gonna re-insulate this pipe and then we're gonna test the system out and make sure that our pressures are good. All right, guys, our unit is finished up. We got this re-insulated. I'm just gonna do a little bit of caulking there. So I'm gonna go inside, turn the thermostat down to a temperature where this will kick on. And we've got this uh, still taken out. So once we come out here, we'll put that in here at startup and check our pressures. All right, so the thermostat is on out there. Let's see what we got. There she goes. Pressures are equalizing. We'll give this a minute and then we'll check our pressure and our superheat. So our system is running. In order to check our superheat and make sure our pressures are good, we have our temperature clamp. We're at 47, 48. And then on this readout, we follow this purple for 410A. We're at 44-ish. So our superheat is right about four or five degrees and that's where we want it. So this system is running like it should. Tons of heat being pulled out. So we are good to go. So I'm gonna show you now how to disconnect your gauges. Start by cutting power. And you'll notice as soon as you do this that the high side will slowly start to drop. And in essence, what that will do is it'll make it to where this one will be a lot easier to take off. If you try to do it while it's running, it'll be real hard to loosen and you might let a little bit more Freon out. So just wait for this high side to stop dropping. It might go down to 250, 200, something like that. And then we can disconnect our gauges. All right, pressures have equalized. So let's start with our low side. Easy as that. And I'll go with our high side. And that's it. It is as easy as that. So we'll put our caps back on. And then we are done, boys and girls. Thank you guys for watching again. We really appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, um, if it saved you some time and money and uh, being able to do this job yourself, uh, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll come out with a lot more DIY HVAC videos, whether it's furnaces, AC, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm out here in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you're local, uh, give me a shout. My number is 615-904-4743. Y'all have a good one. Later.